this film sets out to explore how vision, as well as informing us about the environment around us, enables us to register our position and movements in that environment. We will also examine how this feedback enables us to perceive and to control our movements whilst maintaining our balance. The visual change that corresponds to movement is a flow field. As the driver moves forward down this road, he is looking straight ahead and is experiencing a flow field. Watch how the images move on the screen. It is apparent that a visual flow radiates outwards from the point to which the driver is heading. The flow is slow in the centre and becomes faster and faster near the edges of his visual field. To understand how this flow field is generated, consider a simplified case, an eye moving through a field of fixed points. In this diagram, only rays to the lens itself are shown. As the eye moves forward, all rays fan outwards until they pass behind the eye and outside the field of view. The retinal image would look something like this. Forward movement, rays fan outward, so the visual image expands. Backwards movement, rays fan inwards, visual image contracts. Any movement at all of a subject relative to his environment generates an optic flow. So now let us turn to a simple experiment and see if we can discover how important this optic flow is for the subject in actually determining his sense of movement. A subject is asked to stand on a trolley inside an experimental room. The room is suspended so that it can be moved relative to the stationary subject or the room and the subject on the trolley can be linked together when they will move as a single unit. Or the trolley with the subject on it can be moved independently within the room. To return to our experiment, the trolley is made in such a way that the subject's view is limited so that she cannot see the floor. And as the trolley is moved backwards and forwards within the room, this is what she sees and feels. I'm moving forwards and backwards, now forwards, backwards. The subject maintains an easy balance and reports her movements quickly and accurately. So it is true to say that visual plus mechanical inputs give accurate perception. Now let us blindfold her. This time, when we move the trolley backwards and forwards, the subject will still report her movement correctly, but slightly less confidently, and it is apparent that she sways more. Forwards, I think. Yes. Now backwards. And forwards. Clearly, the subject does not rely on vision alone, for when blindfolded, she still reports her movement correctly even though she can only be receiving mechanical information. So now we have demonstrated that, without visual input, uncertainty. The mechanical information is derived from several sources. Her vestibular system in the inner ear, from joint receptors throughout the body, and from changing pressures on the feet. All these are mechanical receptors, for they respond to forces only. This raises the question, is the subject more influenced by visual or mechanical information? Confusion over relative movement is a common experience. So can we design a laboratory experiment that in a similar way puts visual information for movement in conflict with mechanical?
we have already seen that movement through the environment generates an optic flow. But the same happens if we move the environment past the subject. So, let us go back to the experimental room. The subject is now standing on a stationary trolley and is asked to report how she feels that she is moving. When the room itself is moved, in spite of the fact that she receives no mechanical stimuli, she reports that she is moving. Now backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. In fact, her body sways with the room. Vision is clearly dominating. But now let us link trolley and room together. And again, ask the subject to report what is happening to her. I'm quite still. Are you sure? Yes, I'm quite sure. The subject appears quite unaware of her own movement relative to the real world. Are you still sure? Now you're moving backwards, forwards, backwards, and now forwards. And from the subject's point of view, this is very apparent. For as the room and the subject are moving together, the subject sees herself as stationary, even though the movement of the trolley makes her sway slightly. She sees the person standing on the floor as moving, because relative to the room and herself, he is moving. Once again, vision appears to dominate. If we now use a linkage that will move the room at twice the speed of the trolley and in the same direction, when the subject is moved forwards, the room will move faster and therefore the optic flow will fan inwards. To understand this, let us superimpose a trolley, grey, on our earlier optic flow diagram. As the trolley moves, the room will move faster, but in the same direction. So, for forward movement, rays that normally fan out will be seen to fan in. Remember, as the rays fan in, the perceived movement is backwards. Or, as the rays fan out, perceived movement is forwards. Now the subject reports incorrectly that she is moving forwards. For forwards, I think, yes. Backwards. Forwards. Backwards. In these experiments, we have demonstrated that in the experience of movement, visual information for movement can and does dominate mechanical information. But what about balance? If we arrange a light source to project a spot of light onto a mirror fixed to a hinged pole, any movement will be magnified, and it will be seen that a person holding the pole, standing as rigidly as possible, still sways slightly, making appropriate muscular compensations to maintain balance. The traditional view is that this sway is detected by mechanical receptors. But as we have already seen, there is also a specific type of visual change that accompanies any movement of the body, the optic flow. This is equally true whether the movement is a progression through the environment or an oscillation within the environment. How important then is this visual information in maintaining balance? In most adults, even when doing a difficult task, the sway is small and balance is easily maintained. But if visual information is important, then it should be possible to upset a subject's balance in an experimental room by moving the room gently forwards or backwards. Infants learning to stand are less stable than the adult and far more easily put off balance. The infant in this experiment has only been walking for a month. When we move the room backwards, the child falls.
and again. In 92 trials of this type, seven infants, balance was clearly disturbed in the predicted direction in 82% of the trials. It seems then that for the infant learning to maintain balance, visual information is far more potent than mechanical information. But the adult, however, is less sensitive to conflict between visual and mechanical information, and movements of the room do not, as with the infant, knock him over. But let us give him an unfamiliar balancing task, such as standing on a narrow beam. With his eyes closed, he depends solely on mechanical stimuli, quickly becomes unstable, and falls off. Or, with his eyes open, if the room is moved, even slightly, he will lose his balance, just as the infant did. In summary, then, all movement generates an optic flow. Forward movement rays fan out, whilst backward movement rays fan in. Where mechanical receptors alone are functioning, movement will be reported hesitatingly. But where mechanical receptors and optic flow are in agreement, movement will be quickly and correctly interpreted. Where mechanical information is in conflict with visual, as in this experiment where the room is moving with the trolley, movement will be misinterpreted. Balance also is vision dependent, but the adult is less sensitive to conflict than the infant learning to balance for the first time. Thus it can be argued that in the normal perception of movement and balance, visual stimuli are dominant over mechanical. Finally, this film has shown several experiments which required a specially constructed room, but you can try the following balance experiments yourself anywhere. Place your feet in a line. Stabilize yourself with your eyes open. Close them, and what happens? Pick up a weight, for example, a briefcase. Balance with one foot behind your calf and arm outstretched. Shut your eyes. Could you remain balanced? Now stand on your toes. With clenched fists and your eyes open, bend your arms and punch hard. OK, so nothing happened. Now close your eyes and do it again. In these experiments and with your eyes closed, you probably lost your balance. What have you learned from this film that could help you to explain this? Mm -hmm.